Good evening. Welcome to the Deliverance Center. Welcome to uh, Phoenix. In our Hawaiian weather. It's about to change. Joshua. All right. Time for Bible study. One person's interested in the Bible study. <laughs> Folks, I if I could sing or dance, I wouldn't be doing this. It's time for Bible study. Yeah. All right, All right. I love ministering to heathens. Now, our best seminar is coming up at the end of the month, Ladies Night, Ladies Healing Night. That's fantastic. Uh, let's go through the announcements real quick. I'm on every day of the week now on the radio on 1010 AM. And I'm also on uh, the radio 24 7 on uh, the website you can catch it here and get the radio shows on archives uh, I'm on every night of the week now on darkskyradio.com 27,000 people uh, last week went down a couple let's see it was 33 the week before but still 27,000 I'll take that any day of the week any day of the week grateful to have it Nine o'clock here in Phoenix. Uh, if you shop at Amazon and uh, you're a Jeff Bezos type guy or gal, uh, he will donate money to our ministry in between cheating his own employees. That's often. <laughs> if you buy something, if you put in our charity name, oh, he'll pay us moolah for you buying your, your stuff on Amazon. Those of you who are high rollers. We have four uh, YouTube teaching channels. This one will be on number one tonight, House of Healing AZ. Here's our self-deliverance page. Uh, send me an email and I'll send you the miracle list so you can get healed at home. If you're watching on YouTube, remember this is your job. You gotta figure out how to get a terror cell in your church so you can terrorize the devil and uh, start picking off the sick people in your church. Hopefully you go to a mega church that's the best one to do. You go in there and you sneak around. You find the sick people there. You invite them to your group. You only need two or three people. That's it. And they start getting healed. That's how I started sneaking around. You gotta learn how to sneak around. If you've been married a few times, you know all about it. <laughs> Don't forget about our donation boxes. They're on the doors there, and those are all hermetically sealed. You can't get out till you donate. And then you can also donate on the website. God bless you. Thank you for everything you sent in last year. It was fantastic. Had a record year. I wrote these three books. They're in the bookstore. One on Satan, one on divine healing, and the other on how to get healed from mental illness. Okay. Thursday nights are healing rooms. The thing is booming. Booming. I didn't get a report of how it went last night, but there was a lot of people here. We've also started a new ministry for the mentally ill. We have our mental illness healing class, and that's in this sanctuary where I'm standing. Uh, it's either A or B. Which, which is it? Is it A or B? Well, anyway, it's either A or B. But anyway, it's that door there going in here. If you know somebody who's got bipolar or schizophrenia or something like that, we have a healing class here every Thursday. At seven o'clock. All right. I did a Bible study a few weeks ago on uh, the secret stuff the devil uses on Christians to beat them. But I left one out. And I'm going to do that one tonight. I didn't want to include this one in with the rest of them because this one's the most important one. Here's his super secret. I'm going to reveal it to you tonight. Let's read together. Hebrews chapter 12, Paul said to you, follow peace, okay, with all holiness. Now, this Greek word, agiasmos, means sanctification. We've gone over this several times. There's uh, two types of sanctification. 
people who don't know their two types Get into fights over the subject everybody fights over it. There's no reason to fight over it Just interpret it correctly it makes perfect sense when you're born again your spirit man is instantly Sanctified Within like a second In here complete sanctification Total perfection but the rest of the person body soul spirit conscious Your mind is not sanctified instantly Duh That sanctification is progressive as you Grow in grace and walk by faith You become a sanctified saint Makes sense, right? You wouldn't believe that. What I just said right there causes all kinds of controversy. Church denomination fighting over it like crazy. Stupid. Just read the text clearly and you'll get it. I'm sanctified and I'm being sanctified. That's how it works. Let's go to another slide here you won't like it says Without which no man will see the Lord duh You must be born again the Greek phrase is gnail anathen it means to be generated or born from above You can't get to heaven by believing in Christ in your head. It doesn't work. I Believe in Jesus, and I think he's great Do you think he's the son of God? Why not? You're not saved That's got nothing to do with being saved it's a spiritual experience in the spirit man where you are born again instantly Sanctified if you are not sanctified you will never see The Lord you will die face judgment and go to hell Which we don't want anybody to do Looking diligently all said Episcopal beware is what it means. He's giving us a warning here Beware lest any man who's to rail miss it Miss what the grace of God Holy smoke, how do you miss the grace of God? It's very similar to my recent trip to Kansas. I went back there to see my dad. He's 91 and dying of cancer I had to go back there and make sure he was all you know ready to go spiritually and everything and I go out the Sky Harbor Air Airport uh, and uh, I take Southwest And of course every time I fly out of Southwest, it's always the last terminal You ever done that? I never get one or two. It's the one you go down this way Then you go down that way. It goes all the way down there So I get over there and I I'm early over an hour early and uh, I thought well I'll just do a quick Bible study. So I went to sit down. There was no seats. I thought, all right, well, I'll just sit over here across the way at, at another uh, flight because there were some seats over there. So I just walk over there from over here. I walked over here, sat down, not thinking, well, I had my back to the uh, my gate. I went over to the other gate, not my back to that gate. I'm sitting there and I start doing the Bible study and I get all engrossed in what I'm doing and guess what? I'm not thinking time flies by That's what happens to me. I Get grossed in something and I become a drooling vegetable. I, boop, I'm right there. I can't get out of it. I Look at my time and I go. Oh gosh boarding time is a uh, 1040 so I It was 1035 so I grab my stuff up put it pack it in go across back over here. There's nobody there. I Go up to the front Southwest thing and I say hey listen 1040 is boarding. I got a boarding pass. He says no, that's departure time. I Said well, it's 1035 Where's the plane? Where'd the plane boss the plane? 
Oh, they decided to leave early. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The one time I screw up. I do it once in my life. Never missed a flight before. One time. And the plane leaves early. Yes, sir. Oh, I'll fix you up, the guy says. Oh, I can't wait to hear this. Oh, we can get you to Kansas, Wichita. No problemo. Oh, good. I hit the lottery. You got to go through Las Vegas, stay over there for several hours. Then you got to catch a flight from there to Wichita. Well, I was supposed to be there at uh, 1.30. I end up, ended up there at 9.30 at night. Spent the whole day. Mr. Rail. I missed the flight. Paul said, be careful. I'm warning you. I'm warning you. Don't miss the grace of God. I missed my flight. It took off without me. I didn't think you could miss the grace of God. You thought wrong. Each person only gets so many chances to change. And then the flight leaves. Yeah. I had a three hour layover in Phoenix before I even left. Top that one. Lest, lest Satan's great victory. Here it is it's the killer. It's not bitterness. Everybody has that. It's a root of bitterness. Okay? Somebody says something to you and does something to you. Everybody has a moment of bitterness. Well, you just degraded me. You just trashed me. Well, how, what are you talking to me like that for? What are you doing that to me? You said you do this. You didn't do that. You stabbed me in the back. Everybody gets that. 100% of Christians get that. And they have a brief period of bitterness. Well, that's not, geez, but that's different than having a root of bitterness That's what we'll see in a minute There's a difference between having a brief period of bitterness and a Root of bitterness How can a born-again Christian have a root of bitterness? Oh, you got to watch out you'll miss your flight How do you miss your flight a root of bitterness? You will miss your flight home Check it out it says, lest the root of bitterness, pikria, the Greek word means poison, springs up, fuo, blows up, or inflates, and troubles you, and akleo, crowds you out. Fuo is an example of this frog, I forgot the name of it. This frog, when it needs to find a hot babe, and I'm saying that by faith. There must be hot babes among frogs, but I just don't see it. This thing inflates. See? What happens is when you have a little bit of bitterness, it starts to inflate. And if you catch it in time, it just goes back down. But Paul said, watch it. If this thing in blows up, it turns into a root of bitterness, and there's poison in it. See? So you get a little pimple or a boil on you, and when it first starts inflating, it's no big deal. But if it keeps inflating, it fills with pikria, poison. That's how you miss your flight. Thereby, many people have become, me I know, contaminated or stained. You can obviously these terms are all natural terms, but they're applied spiritually He's saying you be, can become Spiritually contaminated if you allow bitterness to inflate and drive a root into your soul And he said that root can cause you to pull a brother Mike sitting right there not hearing anything over there focusing on that Romans not listening to morning yelling. I never heard a word. I missed my flight. Never heard him say one thing. I was so in that. A root of bitterness. 
that drives down into your soul will cause you to miss your flight and you will be what that's what it is I know it means to be spiritually stained Hebrews 12 16 lest there be any fornicator or Babylos it means to cross over a threshold a profane person like Esau what is a Babylos it is a person like an American Christian there's a line here that's the sin line and American Christians love to just sneak up there you know no this isn't porn it's just you know it's just a couple of swimsuit models they I'm not really I'm not really mad at them no but I've been thinking about them for two days now they get right up to the line of sin and they monkey around there I only had three beers they're just puttering around that sin line and then they cross over to the other side Paul said lest there be any of you he's talking to Christians who's a fornicator or a profane person somebody who gets close to the sin line and then crosses over it's kind of a tightrope thing you ever done a youth group ministry I haven't but I've counseled a lot of youth pastors they just get up to this line here the sex line I hope they didn't cross it it's just feeling them up couch kissing dry humping they're just there's they're bordering that little line there of going all the way they're not doing it then and eventually oops they go over happens all the time and I'm talking about the youth minister and the girls in the youth group I'm not talking about the people in the youth group so you can't putter around that line if you cross over there the demons are waiting for you on the other side and once they see you cross over they see that as a green light they see that as you're their friend and now they're gonna start bringing you stuff and giving you stuff they're gonna start tempting you in ways you were never tempted before why maybe loves you crossed over to the other side e Esau he uses an example for one morsel of meat brosis means a meal sold his birthright you know that afterwards when he would have inherited the blessing what happened he was <clears throat> he rejected why is he telling Christians this because it's relevant he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears most born-again Christians are not going to make the rapture you know why they're not overcoming Christians they're they're line hover are Christians yeah that's what Jesus said Luke 23 watch watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that will come upon the whole earth what kind of people are not watching the crossover folks instead of hating sin they just kind of get as close as they can to it without actually doing it they're tightrope walkers the problem is if you don't hate it you'll eventually go back to it Esau Esau is a tremendous example of a root of bitterness Genesis 25 it says uh, you know the story Esau was out hunting he comes in and man he's starving and he's physically exhausted 
and he hasn't eaten and uh, Everybody knows what that like you get kind of faint you feel like you're gonna pass out and uh, Jacob sawed pottage Huh Jacob was a pottage solder <laughs> That was a joke for me. I didn't I you don't need to get that I got that What it was actually was thought is pride of pride. He was showing off this Pottage to him see he was playing it he was showing him look at look at that see see Jacob was a mama's boy And he grew up in the tents with mama and He could cook and clean He was in a way a house husband so to speak Esau was a man's man tough as nails a fighter a warrior and he was a hunter He was a kicker Tough guy, okay? it even happened in the womb. They had a cage match in her womb, and Esau pinned Jacob in the womb and darted out first. <laughs> Jacob, not willing to give up, reached for one last grab after he got his face kicked in and held on to his heel as they both slid out the womb. Esau beating Esau was bigger than Jacob and stronger than Jacob and tougher than Jacob Jacob took after his mother She was a liar and a sneak She was Playboy play me in the deer Rebecca was drop over dead gorgeous She grew up in a family of liars. She used her beauty to manipulate people Sound familiar hmm women that are exceptionally attractive For obvious reasons. I do it too. We use their beauty to manipulate others mm -hmm. I know how they feel I did it for years <laughs> and so Jacob is carrying around this pottage and he's showing it off because Jacob knows how to cook Jacob if he were alive today would be on a chef show on cable TV And he was boiling Not Zayd. He was boiling a pot of lentils and This pot of lentils there were several different obviously kinds of stuff They made soup out of was reddish in color why did he choose red? Esau was red. Hair was red. Hairy body. He looked like a polar bear. Bright red hair all over him. He looked like stuff he was hunting. <laughs> so he got red soup. He was showing it off. See, he's thinking like his mother. He's thinking. And he was faint. He was exhausted. He said, Feed me, I pray. My God, I'm dying. Give me some of that Adoma that red soup. Give me that stuff He says hey, wait a minute Wait a minute he says if I give you this soup you have to give me your birthright Why well he was the firstborn He got the birthright. He got the blessings from Isaac the firstborn son got it, not second. Jacob had already been whipped in the womb, and he was whipped in life. Isaac got the benefits. Jacob was going to keep working in the kitchen for the rest of his life. Remember that story? You've read that story, haven't you? Okay, I didn't put the whole thing on it because I don't have time. Well, check this out. <clears throat> when Rebecca, her name means to ensnare, was uh, pregnant, ready to deliver, what what happened? She had twins in her room, in her womb. What kind of twins? Right, exactly, fraternal. The first came out red, 
hairy See Esau had hair on him in the womb Now I've never given birth to a child before and I don't have any plans on doing it But having a big old hairy thing coming out of you that's got to be weird <laughs> By any definition that's weird They called his name Harry not hairy like we have, but hairy meaning this dude's hairy. Then his brother came out, lost the fight, but he was still trying to get out first, holding on to his heel. And his name was called Jacob, the heel follower. That's all he was. Isaac was, hey, Isaac, get her done. 60. Good job, buddy. Wow. Isaac's still ready. Yeah, that's what it's like when you have a tremendously gorgeous wife. See, that's what happens. Just 60, 70, you're still ready to go. You got a wife that looks like a barnyard fence stump, drops off about 45, thereabouts. Here's a 60 year old guy ready to go. Finally, got him some twins. By the way, she couldn't have kids, right? And Isaac prayed, powerful man of God, correct? One of the great patriarchs. God healed her and gave her twins. Amen. Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. Back to Genesis 25. And what profits my birthright to me if I'm dead? Jacob said, Swear to me that you're going to give me your birthright. Cough that thing up. And Jacob did it. Gave him the bread and the pottage. That was it. He did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. See? Carnal Christians always do it their way. People who are carnal spiritually and blind to the spirit world always do things the way they want to do it. They don't like people giving them advice. They don't want to take any instruction. They want to do it their way. And almost 100% of the time, they end up what? A spiritual failure like Esau. He developed a root of bitterness. Esau, Banzat, disesteemed his birthright, trashed it for a bowl of soup. And Esau was 40 when he took two wives. And they were Hittite women. What was significant about that? Can't. Isaac and Rebecca couldn't stand them. They had no respect for him. Rebecca, in particular, hated her daughters in law. She couldn't stand them. Probably because they wouldn't listen to her. Listen, when you're a gorgeous person and you grow up spoiled and people cater to you, when you become an adult, that carries over. And you like to be catered to and taken care of as an adult. You get used to that mindset. Well, a couple of these Hittites come in. They're not, they don't believe in Jehovah. They have no respect for him. They don't have any respect for her. So she develops deep-seated root of bitterness toward these two women. Isaac didn't like them either. They were a pain in the family's derriere. And you know the story as we continue on, Rebecca hatches a plot, which was typical for her. Her brother was the same way. Her family was the same way. They were all manipulators. They were all sneaky. You ever had a manipulator, a sneaky person in your family? It's scary, man, because you're always watching them out of the corner of your eye. You never know what they're up to, but you always know they're up to something to help themselves. Correct? Rebecca's no different. Genesis 27. She's now, she's the son. Listen to me. I was overhearing a conversation. She, she's sneaking around. She's in the other tent. And I heard a conversation, right? Between who? Esau and Isaac. Isaac says, hey, you know, it's time for me to get my birthright. Tell you what I'll do. I'll go out and fix. I'll go hunt for you. I'll get your favorite meal. 
I'll bring it back like a coupon for old country buffet and then you give me everything and I she goes I will Rebecca is in the other tent doing what what sneaky per people always do they stalk you on Facebook they try to get in your email all that they're looking around trying to and she overheard that conversation well she panics because she doesn't like Esau Esau is a tough guy an outdoorsman a man's man Jacob's mama's boy he takes care of mama he learned with mama he, he works in the house he does he shepherds the sheep sometimes he's a softer boy. he doesn't have any hair on his body I resemble I mean it's just nothing there Nothing. Sometimes I'll. My wife didn't come tonight. I'm, I'm fine. Sometimes I'll go rent some chest hair from those party shops. You ever seen that? That's when I want to be like Esau, a man's man. But then she looks at me and goes, what, What's that? You, what, throw that out. And then I. <laughs> And I go back to my spot. And uh, Isaac says to his conniving, sneaky, lying mother, wait a minute, whoa, hold on, what you talking about, Willis? He's going to know I'm not Esau. Duh. Look at this. I don't have a hair on my body. She says, listen, just do what I tell you. People that are spoiled, people that are raised spoiled, people that are hung up on themselves because of their own beauty uh -huh. they think differently than the rest of us hello they think different if you ever known anybody like that you know what I'm talking about she wants everything her way and they impose their personality on other people they're used to controlling others so she says to him listen son don't worry about it you're not going to get cursed I am so desperate to get rid of Esau and these rotten two women he married. I hate their guts. And I love you and I'm, I don't like Esau. I will take, as the ultimate codependent mother, I will take your curse for you. I'll take it for you. Codependent mothers take the curses for the children. And in the end, it's the children who die cursed. Mm -hmm. Giving your children too much is worse than not giving them enough. Mm -hmm. Rebecca had gotten too much when she was young. She was daddy's girl. She was gorgeous. Everybody came over. Oh, she's so pretty. Look at the baby. She was beautiful as a baby. If you grow up in a home where you get all the attention, you get all the compliments, all of a sudden, your personality starts to warp. You become an entitled person, which has no place in Christianity. Obey me and go get the food. She said, we got to do this quickly now. I'll fix the dinner fast. we got to do it before Esau gets back. So Rebecca, a top-notch, top-of-the-line cook, he goes and gets the food. She prepares it quickly, and bang, he's at the front of the line. Remember the story? You read the story, right? Well, guess what? Jacob, the great patriarch, he comes to him and says, Hey, Father, I'm your firstborn son. Click, something goes off in Isaac's head. What was that? Well, he's blind. He's blind. He can't see. But he can hear. And that voice don't sound quite right. He says, uh, I've done as you told me to do. I've got your, here it is. The Grand Mansion Chinese Buffet. There it is. Right there. You ever eaten there? Oh, that's a nice place to eat. Here, 
have your dinner and then give me everything Well, Jacob says Wait a minute here. This isn't adding up How'd you get this meal so fast? That's not quite right the voice something's off see What's going wrong here? Ministers who trust their carnal skills their five senses Usually end up in deep trouble They usually end up tricked And guess what Jacob did Standard American Christian they want to do something God didn't tell them it was okay to do But since they want to do it they make up reasons why God would want them to do it Then if somebody asks them about it they go the Lord told me to do it You ever heard that one in fact you hear it very common Oh, the Lord told me this and that and then he told me this and that you're looking at the person man God speaks to you more than he did Paul <laughs> As they say in Thailand something won't Something's wrong with your discernment I'm sensing so Jacob's going wait a minute the voice said right. How'd you get this food here so quickly? Something wrong here something's because oh No, don't worry about it. God brought it to me This is a God coupon to old country buffet Isaac said well, wait a minute. Let me double check this. I'm going to carnally use my discernment Okay, when you as a Christian use your carnal senses to discern mom mom I met Bob last week. We're doing a man uh, uh, At the bar. Oh, okay, man And he's such a nice guy he, He's funny well, he, And he he likes pets We like pets once you go down your evaluation process, clicking it down carnally, the end result is going to hurt you very bad. He's carnally checking it out. Well, let me have your hands here. Give me your stick your hands there. Well, Rebecca had that thing covered, man. He was suddenly, for the first time in his life, hairier than a polar bear. <laughs> yes, sir. She took some skins and put them on his arms. Imagine that he feels it and Isaac having no spiritual discernment at all. He's blind. He goes oh, and he's smelling what? Oh Man, he's smelling that food okay. Are you seeing this story the devil uses all these exact same things on Christians He, he gets them to carnally smell something or hear something or want something he gets you to want something too much and then God told me to do it God did it. and you get caught and he goes the voice of Jacob's but the hands are Esau's what does he do he goes with the food Isaac discerned him not Because his hands were hairy He used his physical skills his five senses to discern something that was spiritual and when you do that You almost always end up in deep trouble He did he took the meal and guess what he did blessed him gave him everything when he saw Heard the word of his father He started crying what happened there well, you know the rest of the story Esau comes in he's got the meal prepared finally he comes up to his dad. Hey Isaac goes wait, wait, wait a minute. I don't understand you were here earlier And guess what happens a root of bitterness goes into Esau's soul and what happens to him? Hatred. Hatred is in that root for Jacob. Hated him. 
watch what happened next. It's really interesting Esau says in his heart hey my dad's getting old and he's going to kick the bucket After he does I'm gonna kill him and get back what I lost He gave up his birthright because of carnality which he learned from Isaac. Isaac trusted his senses. Esau trusted his senses. And then I will murder my brother. Well, that would get rid of, by getting rid of him, he gets the birthright back. He gets the blessing back. He thinks his dad's gonna die soon Oops once again Some things you think are gonna happen if you discern it carnally don't happen It didn't happen. He didn't die right away Somebody came and told Rebecca yes, sir people who are manipulators make friends with other manipulators you didn't know that did you uh -huh, they have like a click and they have a communication network now it's this way but back then it was verbal correct well somebody comes to her and says hey you're not gonna believe this I was you weren't there to listen in on the conversation I was listening in on it for you guess what happened Esau's gonna gonna kill him Rebecca then assumes assumes the old man Isaac is going to die in a very short period of time. Apparently, he didn't look that healthy. He fooled him. Rebecca's second plot is then hatched. She calls Jacob and says, Hey, your brother Esau is going to kill you. She says, Now, my son, obey my voice and go back to my dysfunctional family. Laban, the pathological liar, I'm the deceptive manipulative liar. He's pathological lying So is their father and go to Haran and hide there yeah, Right, and she says Stay there until your brother's anger turns away and when When he forgets what you did yeah, wait a minute <laughs> See manipulators After they get in trouble always find someone to blame so she says to Jacob, you did it. She hatched the whole plot. He didn't want to do it in the beginning. She talked him into it and then blamed him for it. Some guy who's married is laughing. <laughs> then I will fetch you from there. Why should I lose both my sons in one day? Can't you see the scenario? Here's the mindset Isaac's gonna be dead soon He's old he's blind. He's not gonna make it if he dies soon, which we expect him to I'm gonna lose my other son because the other son's gonna murder him To get the birthright because it automatically went to him as the oldest surviving son Rebecca says Genesis 27. I am weary of my life because of my two daughters in law. She forgot to add some things there. She was weary of her life growing up in a family of people who lie, manipulators, con artists, self absorbed, selfish people. All of those things will wear your soul completely out. You know why? Because it always catches up with you later You have a bunch of superficial friends here, but later on in life when you actually need help There's nobody there that cares She's weary of her life and tired of it all now The most beautiful person in the family the spoiled person in the family is now the most depressed person in the family Laban wasn't depressed. He was still at home lying away Happy with his lies still manipulating and lying and still getting everything for himself 
And then she says, if Jacob takes a wife like Esau did, what's going to happen to me? My life is going to be worthless. What happens when you start coming down with depression? Man, I tell you what, the devil pumps every negative thought in the world in your head. All of a sudden, you get this negative mindset. Wait a minute. Oh, my God, these, these daughters-in-laws are driving me crazy. Jacob's going to, what if Jacob marries somebody like that? All of a sudden, you kind of develop a panic disorder. Chronic negativity is the root of panic attacks. The person naturally, by nature, clicks to something negative. And it, they develop a pattern of rapid negative thoughts, one after the other. <gasps> and the fear spirits give them panic attacks. She's now coming up with negative scenarios that aren't even real. The root of bitterness is Satan's secret weapon for destroying Christians in America. Check out this one, Naomi. You've read this story, haven't you? Book of Everybody read that? Everybody likes this story. Well, Naomi is a regular person, man, just like regular people today. What happened to her? Gosh, a lot of bad things. She had a great life in her hometown of Bethlehem. She had a great husband. She had two beautiful sons. Everything was going great. They had the house. They had the cars. They had the money, the bank account, the credit card, everything they were killing it. He had a retirement. He had money. No problemo. They move. They move. What happens? He dies. Her husband dies unexpectedly. What else happens? The two boys get married, and then the two boys die. She's now left with who? Oprah and... Ruth, who was a Moabite, right? What does she do with him? Well, she sits down and goes, hey, you know something? This depression has overrun me. And I'm going to go back to Bethlehem and die there. You two are free to leave. So Oprah left and went to uh, another city and started a television station and then <laughs> Ruth then says No, no, you don't understand. I love you See and it wasn't superficial love. It was deep Love see love covers a multitude of sins and she said Where you go I go Where, where you live I live Where you die I die where they bury you they bury me. She couldn't talk her out of it. So she took her back to Bethlehem, her hometown, hoping that the depression would clear up. You don't understand. Once a spirit of heaviness enters your body and you develop depression, going to different places and doing different things doesn't cure you. If you go to Disneyland and you, you ride the Whopper, yeah, for a couple of seconds there, that was fun. And if you take some crack or drugs or alcohol, you get a good drunk, you have a nice orgasm, whatever it is. But once you're done with that, patching yourself emotionally, the spirit of heaviness always brings back the depression that never leaves. Like a Peanuts cartoon. There he is, pig pen, everywhere he went. A cloud followed him. Pigpen was really Naomi. She couldn't get rid of the cloud, but she thought, I'll go home to Bethlehem. That's where my heart really is. I want to go home. Like Dorothy in the Wizard of Oz. Right? Like uh, Scarlet on Gone with the Wind. She, she was hurt and wounded and depressed. But I'll go back to Tara, she said. Tara. That's where my life is. Oh, Bethlehem. That's my Tara. I'll go there. I'll get this horrible clinical depression off of me. Wrong, friend. Once that spirit enters your body, 
you can go everywhere in the world and they go with you She goes back to Bethlehem and then says what happens She and Ruth Yeah, they went to the city and everybody said hey, she's back Unbelievable Where's your husband? Where's the, we're so glad that you know everybody knew her there They were so happy to see her guess what happened the depression never left her. Naomi means what My my delight She says, why do you call me my delight? She said call me Mara which means bitterness why? Because the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went out full. They left Bethlehem loaded with everything. Family, friends, money, everything. And now I have come home empty. Why call me, why call me delightful? Seeing that Jehovah has what? Testified against me. And El Shaddai. God Almighty has afflicted me. Now you see the results and the deception of clinical depression. People that are depressed listen to spirits, tell them, God did that to you. Why don't you blame him for it? Yeah, it's his fault. After all, he's omnipotent, isn't he? He's El Shaddai. God Almighty, he could have fixed it for you. He could have saved your husband, couldn't he have? Naomi told the demons, yeah. He could have saved your sons, right? He could have done it, but he didn't do it, right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, then it's his fault, correct? That's right, it's his fault. People with long-term depression always end up blaming El Shaddai. Why? Because he's almighty and he could have fixed it. But he didn't do it. I can't count the times somebody has said to me, Hey, Mike, this, this God thing is crazy. Look at the people starving in Sudan. Look at the babies dying. Uh, look at the boarded babies. Look, look at ISIS. Look. What's he really saying to me? God's doing all that. He could do something about it. But he's either too ignorant, too uncaring, too stupid, or too lazy to do something about it. That's what the guy's saying. It's a demonic deception. It's not true. God did not bring your adversity and your calamity and your destruction to you. The devil did it. But because you got depressed, you blamed him. And when you blamed him, you cut off any hope that you could ever be restored. You cannot get a miracle from a God you think screwed you over. I hope these YouTubers are listening. I hope somebody's listening to me. Depression causes your mind to think distortion. Spiritual distortion. God should have done something, but he didn't. He screwed me. In the spirit world, behind your back, the demons are laughing at you. They're holding their guts laughing at you. They've got you exactly where they want you. Out of the blessing flow from God. You're out of the stream. You got out of the stream. You're sitting on the shore with no hope. Ever. When she left Bethlehem and had everything, oh man, she was a big Jehovah fan. She loved him. See, in America, we got Naomi's all over the place. They're called fair weather Christians. When things are going good, oh, I tell you what, they're praising the Lord. When things are going great, it's praise God time. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But as soon as the devil comes in, he heard you praising. He saw you at the altar. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, they're thanking Jesus, are they? I'll give them something to think about. 
and father allows it to happen just to see what you'll do Because he doesn't know what you're gonna do. Oh, that's blasphemy brother Mike No, he knows what you're gonna do omnisciently, but he doesn't know what you're gonna do experientially because you haven't done it yet. And your rewards in heaven are not based on what God's omnipotence is it's on what God's experience is with you here Husband two sons gone suddenly Jehovah wasn't The big deal he used to be uh-huh. Oh, yeah Every Christian 100% including me Has to face this At some point in their life That's right at some point in your life hell is going to come to breakfast You're going to go through some dark times And what you decide during that period will determine your destiny Well, you read the rest of the book of Ruth. I mean Ruth took a different route than Naomi didn't she? What a great story Uh Oh This book friends is so great. It's pitiful. I Use chapter 1 and 2 most of the time, but the rest of the book of Job is Off the hook Incredible if you work in the human service field and you're a counselor or a therapist or a psychologist or something and you're a Christian This book is must reading It's a spectacular book of human psychiatry I'll prove it to you. Job chapter 2. What happened? Well, something really bad happened. Instead of Naomi's satanic attack, which was losing loved ones, the devil also attacks us physically. You may find yourself in a hospital near death. It happens Job came down with an illness. I can't even describe it's so horrible He's got boils all over his body which include the rectum scrotum and eyes How can you have boils all over your body? This guy was in chronic pain He couldn't sit he couldn't lay he couldn't walk so they burned down a cabin took the ashes and made a giant pile and the poor guy had to sit in that And he's hurt bad well Job's famous Everybody knows who he is and word spreads fast this guy's Terminally ill something's happened to Job. He's probably gone back into sin my god everything's gone bad in the guy like Naomi, all of his family members were dead. He had lost far more than Naomi lost. For he was far richer, had many more children. The only person left was Yes, sir, the wife. Oh yeah. There she is in all her glory. Job's wife when things were going great. Oh, she was a hot honey. Oh, she had a good attitude Job would come home and tell her a story. She was interested. That's a funny story Job. That's a great story Job Job you in the mood tonight? No problem. Oh, honey. Bang All of a sudden hell comes to the family people are dying the money's gone Oh, it's Hollywood The trophy wife skips Why don't you just curse God and die? 
You don't have any integrity left, you loser. Hey, I'm not criticizing her. She went through a lot of bad times, really bad times, and that's what happens. She was down. She was crushed. He was crushed. Well, he's sitting in his ash pile. Does that happen to Christians sometimes? Yeah, you're, you can end up in an ash pile. Yeah, you can. You know what an ash pile is? It's a character test. God didn't do it, but he allowed it to happen because he wanted to see how you would react. Wait a minute. He knows how I'm going to react. Why does he have? Yeah, he knows it, but he doesn't know it. There is this difference between knowing something and actually knowing it. Everybody does it in every profession. What do you think so-and-so will do under these sir? Oh, he'll do this and that. No problem. Yeah, you know he'll do that, but you don't actually know it until you see it happen. God's the same way. He allowed this to happen to Job for our salvation. And so his three friends come to visit him. And they just sit there and they're looking at these boils and they're looking at this giant ash pit the poor guy's living in. And they start crying for him. They care about him. Right? Where's your friend? And they were hurt, right? Then they sat down with him because they, they loved him, they cared about him. And they all sit around the ash pit. And they're just looking at him. He's so sick. They can't even speak. They're speechless. There's a difference between a fender bender and a massive rollover. Some things are so bad it leaves you speechless. Anybody raising kids knows what I'm talking about. You try to talk when the kid screws up, and it's not a casual screw up, it's a super screw up. And you're the mother, you're the dad, you're speechless. Can't even believe it. They sat there looking at this poor guy suffering and everybody was silent and I mean silent for what? Seven days Because they saw what? They saw how much he was hurting. They respected him and they cared about him The story is good now But it changes real quick He becomes Job becomes the great prophet. He becomes an American Christian after this, Job opened his mouth. Wow. You have no idea how many times the devil has overrun a born-again Christian by listening to them talk. What you say is picked up in the spirit world. They hear it. They hear what you said. When you speak out loud alone you're not alone somebody heard what you said Job starts to open his mouth and guess what he does what happens of course he does he's a person a human being listen when things go so bad and it stays bad for so long nine out of ten people will break the tenth one will break a little later everybody has a breaking point Only one person we know of didn't have one. He starts to curse His day and he starts to curse everything and he starts here and goes right down the list watch this he curses his day What day the day he was born? Then he curses the night he was born, not just the day. Then it says, Job 3 4, let that day be darkness 
and let not God regard it from above neither let the light shine upon it now this is somebody who's hurting so bad and he said seven days of silence to think about this see with the, the reason the devil makes people sick he wants them to drift their thoughts toward him he wants them to start thinking thoughts of self-pity and abandonment and fear of the future and he uses sickness for that exact purpose and he had job by the throat here job after seven days cracked he cursed the day he cursed the night he cursed the light upon his day as for the night let darkness seize it let it not be joined ever in the days of the year he wanted his date of birth removed from history that's how down he was much lower than Naomi don't even let it be listed in the months of the year he wanted it gone why we'll find out here let the stars of the twilight be dark now he's starting to curse the stars that were around on the day he was born this is getting nasty he doesn't want just his day cursed and removed from history he wants the planet destroyed why didn't I die in the womb translation I wish my mother would have miscarried why didn't I give up the ghost when I came out of her womb why didn't she close her knees and just keep me in there permanently when you've been sick for a long period of time you start to have strange thoughts of distortions and delusion that's when the devil moves in on you you can't keep a baby in there by closing your knees now you can see him he's babbling now he's losing his mind Why did her breasts have milk? To, he's now going into the nut zone. He's losing it. Now, should I have lain still? He wanted to be born stillbirth. Hmm. Oh, who are you talking about here? Some total loser? Oh, far from it. This was the great prophet Job. He was known everywhere. He was God's man of faith and power. He was at the top of Jehovah's ministers anywhere on the planet. This guy was the top God man. Hey, if Job can go down, you better beware in case a root of bitterness sinks into your soul. If it does, you're going to be like Brother Mike. You're going to miss your flight. You're going to miss your healing. You're going to miss your deliverance. You're going to miss your destiny. You're going to miss your future. Satan's greatest, greatest weapon is that tap root that goes down into the soul. That's when he finishes it. Then Job says, as a hidden untimely birth now he's saying I wish I would have been a premature birth so I couldn't have survived I would have never been alive you say why are you reading this to me well because that's exactly the same thoughts people have now and I've been a counselor for 37 years don't tell me they don't have them I have heard them I know that I've had some of them myself what are we looking at here? A regular person who is severely ill for a long period of time and he is worn out and he got discouraged. The devil got him right where he wanted him. Worn out. Discouraged. What's he do? 
He uses the illness to take over the mind. Once he has the mind, he has the rest of the fruit. Why is light given to him that is in misery? Why is life given to someone with bitterness in their soul? The soul is the seed of the emotion. This is an emotional rant of a crushed human being who has developed a root of bitterness against who? Let's check it out. People who are miserable for a long period of time with clinical depression wish they were dead. But death doesn't come. And they want it more than somebody digging for hidden treasure. Imagine that. Job is a person who wants to die. He wants to die. My dad wants to die. He wants to go home. Job doesn't want to die for the reason my dad does. My dad wants to go home to Jesus. Job wants to die to get out of his miserable life. There's a difference. Three twenty-five. The thing which I greatly fear has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of has come to me. Suddenly, the gasping revelation hits us right square in the face and takes us back to chapter one. Satan appears before Yahweh or Jehovah. He says, "What are you doing?" He says, "I'm going around the earth, checking the whole planet out." That's exactly what he does. He controls the whole planet. And Jehovah says, oh, I see you've been focusing on my servant Job. And then he provokes him. He says, hey, this guy loves me. He's always serving me. He, he doesn't commit sins. He does a great job. The devil then says to him, what? Well, he does a great job because you give him everything. It's a fraud. You're a fraud and he's a fraud. Everybody would serve you if you get everything. Course, the devil was right. Huh? Can you imagine Kenneth Copeland backsliding? <laughs> Having to give up 50 limousines, six mansions, two jets, helicopters, 45 suits, costs five thousand dollars a piece. Oh, there's no reason to backslide there. Hey, peep, everybody will serve God if they get everything. The Father doesn't know if you would really serve Him if you didn't have those things. He knows it, but He doesn't really know it. What happened here? <clears throat> Suddenly inside Job's soul, it finally came out. He was doing all those things for Jehovah. He offered up sacrifices every day for his children. It said, in the event they may have sinned. Why was he doing all those things for God? He had a deep-seated fear. That his kids were going to sin and face the judgment of God. He was afraid. Fear. Fear draws in calamities. Fear wipes out faith. Fear is the door. The devil walks through right into your life. The thing you fear the most, that's 
what someday will come upon you and Job had that deep-seated fear <laughs> and he was right it all came upon him and the devil saw it and went to Jehovah and say hey he only serves you because you give him everything round two he only serves you because he's healthy look at you take care of his body he's in great shape you do something to his body he'll curse you your faith that's what he said what's that have to do with us it happens all the time many Christians love God and they'll serve him during the good times but they don't serve him during the bad 99% of people backslide not because things are going right but because they're going wrong the devil uses sicknesses he uses calamities he uses bad times to play spots in your mind that God doesn't care about you anymore he's not going to help you he can help you he's not interested he doesn't answer prayer or you did something horrible that causes him to stop his ears he doesn't hear you anymore yesterday in my office a guy walks in just before the healing room started introduces himself starts asking me questions starts asking for prayer I said have a seat here he said well I've been sinning and I'm afraid God's stopped his ears up and he doesn't hear me anymore and I explained to him listen do that was his name dude I said you've had some bad teaching from churches God never stops his ears up to Christians now that was Old Testament this is New Testament this is the blood of Jesus this is Calvary every time you pray he hears every word you say the guy got a smile on his face from here to here He said that you know that's exactly what I needed to hear. He said, "Boy, Job would have loved to come into my office." Sat down. This poor guy had had it, but it all started from fear. Therefore, I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. He had lost his faith. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. All of his emotions had turned against him. Depression, fear, sorrow, misery, sadness, all came to him. Why? Long-term physical illness wears people out. And many times they say things and do things they would have never said under normal circumstances none of these things had Job ever said before never said any of these things never saw himself saying any of these things couldn't believe he said all these things why a root of bitterness from illness got Job from the loss of loved ones got Naomi From my, his own stupidity, got Esau. Some people are very hard on themselves. They don't have the grace and mercy on themselves. Sometimes they give to others. It's very common. They'll forgive others for something they screwed up. But when they screw up, they're hard on themselves. Why? It usually trails back to mama. usually trails back to daddy. Somebody in their youth was hard on them and nitpicked them and criticized them. And so they developed that thinking and behavior pattern. So when they grew up, they started to nitpick and criticize themselves. Not others so much. They're very hard on themselves. It's a common illness. In fact, ministers are the toughest people in the world to get healed. Ministers almost never get healed. Well, 
Oh, well, wait a minute. You, you preach healing and you do this and you do that. How come you ain't healed? Messes with their minds. Bitterness will destroy you. It'll steal your destiny from you. It'll keep God from doing what he wants to do. Send all of his blessings to you. God breaks me with a tempest. He multiplies my wounds for no reason. He will not allow me to take my breath. He fills me with bitterness. Who does? The devil? No. See, Job doesn't know what we know. We read chapter 1 and 2. We know what happened. It was not God that did all this. It's not God that hurt you. It's not God that stole stuff from you. It's not God who sent you the poverty. It was the devil. But you thought it was God. And when you blamed him for it, now you must keep your sickness. You must keep your poverty. You must keep your failure. If I was the devil, I'd do that. Wouldn't you? He's smarter than we are. My soul is weary of my life. I will leave my complaint upon my... Now Job, after cursing everything in the world, now curses himself. He's turned on himself. He hates himself. Which is the root of all autoimmune diseases. Autoimmune diseases are the root is turning on yourself. I will speak bitterness in my soul. I will say to God, hey, listen, don't condemn me. Show me why. You're... Now the devil has given him another line to destroy himself. Asking God why. Why did you do this? Why didn't you fix that? How come you didn't prevent that? Why didn't you block that? Why didn't you help me when I prayed there? Why didn't you do it? As soon as you start running through that long list of whys, you can be sure your blessings will never arrive. You can be sure of it. You know why? Why implies Doubt. Guilt. You did it. Look, I asked you to help me. Why didn't you? Every parent knows what I'm talking about. I told you to do it this way. Why did you do it that way? The implication is the kid screwed up. Why implies God is a screw up. Nobody can get a miracle from a God they see as a screw up. It's not going to happen. Who wants to have faith in someone like that? Well, nobody does. Why do you hide your face from me? Why do you hold me for the enemy? Now self pity has entered Job. And is destroying his soul. Self-pity. Will guarantee you. Zero. Answers to your prayers. Because if you have the Holy Ghost. You can't have self-pity. Not with him around. God is against me. What's happening here? Regular human behavior. Long-term illness. Not understanding the illness. Not knowing the devil's behind it. The devil then comes in and says, Hey, God's behind it. God abandoned you. God let you down. It's God's fault for the divorce. He's the fault for the foreclosure. He caused your layoff at work. 
boom. Everything goes somewhere in a hand basket. Then what does the devil do? There it is. He starts bringing up reasons all this happened to you. Why well, must have done something? And the devil goes, now you're thinking my way. There you go, boy. Let's start from the beginning and run over all of your past sins. There you go. Now you now you're my guy. Now you're my girl. You're my baby now. Let's start at your childhood. Now, what did you screw up there? Oh, you didn't do that. You didn't do this. You should have taken that job. You shouldn't have married that person. You should have gone over there. You shouldn't have left. You should have come. You should have gone. And now he's got Job bagged. He's bagged. He's cursed everything in the world. He's cursed himself. Now self-pity set in. Depression. Huge. Chronic pain. Consistent. And now he starts nitpicking himself from childhood to the moment he's in the ash pile. What was he forgetting? All those times he sacrificed to Jehovah and gave him a sin offering and God accepted him and covered his sin. Now that he's lost his mind, he doesn't remember the sacrifices. He doesn't remember God covering his sin. Now he's nitpicking himself, going over his past. Once the devil gets you to go over your past, he's got your future. Because Job didn't have the blessings you do. Oh, far from it. The precious blood of Christ eliminates your past. It no longer exists. Amen, amen. Your sin's not just covered, it's gone. So when you go over your past sins, you're going over sins that don't exist anywhere except in your demented mind. Brother Mike called me demented. I'm going back to the Lutheran church. Now you stay right where you are. This is more important. Okay, this is real life here. This ain't this Lutheran Episcopal thing. No, this is real here. From my youth, he's running Job down. One dies in his full strength, being at ease. His breasts are full of marrow. Oh, everything's going great. Translation, somebody had a great life. There you go. Yeah, that's the devil now. He gets you to look at other people next. Oh, look, that guy there. My God. I done more for God than they do. I serve God more than they do. They're living in sin. They aren't even serving God. Look, look at that. They're in a yacht. I'm on an driving an Edsel. <laughs> he gets you to look at somebody else now. Now we're in big trouble. He starts to get you to compare and see how much better you are than me. Oh, but wait a minute. Then another person like me dies in bitterness. What's he doing there? What humans do all the time. Why? God, this doesn't make any sense, man. You got, well, you know, it's it's a Billy Joel syndrome. Only the good die young. Why do the good people get crapped on? And then these psychos like Hitler, all these, they all have long lives. Why is that? Why does that happen? How does that happen? Job's so jacked up now he can't even see straight. He may not have been able to see. He might have had a boil on his eye, the poor guy. Why, God? Why is this happening to me? Let's close. Okay. You know this story. Big old revival breaks out. Peter and some of the other apostles head on down there. It's fabulous. Fantastic. I read this story often. Because I'm getting a revival here someday. I've already been promised it. They're having a massive revival over there. It's 
Peter laying their hands on everything. John's there, every, everybody getting filled with the Holy Ghost, everybody getting healed, and so on. Well, Simon the sorcerer goes, Wow, this is the real deal. I'm gonna turn my life over to Christ. He does. He gets saved and then he gets baptized. But he never went through deliverance. So while he's watching uh, John and Peter and all these miracles happening, he's watching them. The demons are telling him, hey, Simon, you know how to do this. This is just, this is, this is the major leagues. You were in the minor leagues before. Why don't you ask that apostle over there to give you that power? You can make a fortune on this thing. Simon, you don't have to go to the clubs here. Go to Vegas. You'll be a headliner. That's what the devil told him. Why? Simon had never gone through deliverance. He never got rid of the spirits. So they were still in his body and they were putting these thoughts in his mind about greed and material things and money. Remember the story? Well, he goes to Peter and asks him for, here, I'll tell you what. You know, and he may, you know, he may not have been malicious about it. It was just, that's just the way Simon did business. He was just like normal to him. He hadn't renewed his mind yet. He'd only been saved for a few days. Here. Now, can I have that? So I got to go to Vegas. I'm leaving tomorrow. This thing here you're doing, it's a killer. Well, Peter sees right through that and he sees the greed and he says, Repent of this wickedness and pray to God. Well, you got to repent and pray. You're not going to get delivered or healed if you don't repent and pray. The pattern's right there, it's so clear. Job, Naomi, Esau, hey, come on, dude. It's right here. If perhaps what? Sin is your behavior. Backed up by thoughts. The sin starts in the thought life. The lust thoughts lead to the lustful behavior. Correct? First, second, porn. First, Second, first, second. Gambling, first, second. Hit me. It's in here. Job was in here. Years ago, I was driving down to Tucson, and I was taking my two granddaughters home. This was, they were little then. Uh, you know, like little, little like that. I can't remember how young they were. They were really, well, they're in their back seat. And I'm driving along, and I start to talk to my youngest granddaughter. Her name is Sophie. And... I'm asking her a question. She's not answering me. She's looking out the window. And uh, intently looking out the window. And I asked her a couple more questions and she doesn't answer me. Well, my other granddaughter, Victoria, who was two years older, says, Grandpa, she's in her mind. <laughs> my God, what a revelation. I never forgot it. The devil wants to get into your mind. If he can get into your mind, he can get you to focus on something and you don't hear somebody talking to you. You don't hear God talking to you. You're looking out the window. Grandpa, she's in her mind. She had done it before. Victoria had seen Sophie go into her mind. People like me who don't have much of a mind, we get in there sometimes, but we don't stay long. 
The devil wants your mind because once he gets your mind, then he can get you to sin. Once he can get you to sin, he can then start bringing in hell on wheels. These people's lives are screaming at us right now. Losing things like Naomi. Losing your health like Job. Screwing up and being hard on yourself and being hateful to the person who took advantage of your stupidity, Esau. Ruined their lives. None of those people's lives are to have anything to do with you. You know why? Because you're going to do what Paul said in Hebrews. You're going to beware in case a root of bitterness. Not bitterness. Okay, everybody has bitterness once in a while. That's perfectly normal. But a root of bitterness, if you ponder on it, if you keep it, if you keep processing it, it starts to Dig down into the soul. Once it takes root in the soul, the person now has a disease. And it takes a miracle to heal them. You can get rid of bitterness very easily. A root of bitterness? Uh -uh. No. You can't have a couple of meal prayers and get rid of a root of bitterness. It's not going to happen. Peter said it. You can't just pray. You, you have to repent of a root of bitterness. The only way Job got rid of his root of bitterness, Jehovah himself came to him and shocked him out of his mind. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. Now, my eyes see you, and I abhor myself, and I repent in dust and ashes. What? That's the only way to get rid of a root of bitterness. Bitterness? No. No, not at all. You could get rid of that and pray 10 minutes or something. Yeah, you can do some what they call self-talk. Do you like my idea here at the church? No, we don't like that. We don't think that. And by the way, we're in the ministry. You're not. So you, you just sit in your pew there. Oh, well, I'm, God, I can't believe that. It's appalling. Somebody offended me at church. That incident I just described happens all the time at church. The person has no problem at all. If... A root doesn't tap into the soul. If they get rid of it right away. Well, wait a minute. Now, okay, well, I don't know. Maybe my idea wasn't that. I don't know. I, I mean, I shouldn't take a, a long-term offense. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let them go on. Now. I'm going to stop. It. See, there's no root there. They got rid of it right when it happened. Boom, boom, boom. Job and Esau and Naomi. In the soul. Their lives were ruined because of it. I perceive, Simon, you are in the cole, bile of Picria, poison, and in the bond, Sundesmus was a band they would put to hold up a joint. For example, a sling. Okay. For example, have you ever seen those? Uh, they're not handcuffs. They're, uh, what do you call them? A tie wrap. Why do you know that, sir? Uh, uh, raids a lot. That's a good comeback. No, sir, I think you've been arrested. I know you. Now here, I think you are in the vial of poison and you have been tied up by what? Iniquity. Where was that iniquity? 
in the soul. <laughs> See that? Soon this month. That is a joint tie. It's just as strong as handcuffs, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody come get... Listen, folks. You got a root of bitterness? God's not going to come here tonight and just fall on you and take it out of there. It's not going to happen. You have to pray and repent you have to confess it and get rid of it and if you do guess what you're in line for not Job and Naomi not Esau you're in line for the unsearchable riches of Christ tonight you've got a little Job in you you give more grace and mercy to others than you give yourself. You're hard on yourself. You're going to repent of it tonight so you can get your blessing flow. That's what you're going to do. You're going to repent of being hard on yourself. You're going to pray and ask God to forgive you. Because it's just as big a sin to be hard on yourself as it is somebody else in the eyes of God. Some of you have had calamities hit your life and that why God thing, the devil pumped that why God thing in there. And you've been miserable ever since. Why me? Why didn't you help me? Why didn't you prevent it? Why didn't you fix me? Why didn't you, as soon as you start asking why, 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 why? Oh, there they go. All the blessings made. You're going to repent of it tonight. You know why? Because you do not want to be like Job. Okay? Job served God because in his heart he had a seed of fear that if I don't do it, something bad's going to happen to me or my family. Fear in a small part motivated Job. In Christianity, you cannot have that. Why? Love is the motivator now, not fear. You serve God and you love God. You do what he says, not because you fear being punished, not because you fear him rejecting you or banning you. You do it. Out of love. God blesses you for the exact same reason. All of it now is based on love. You have Job in you? We're going to get him out tonight. Have you had a series of horrible losses like Naomi? Have you? We're going to get Naomi out of you tonight. Have you screwed up and been angry at yourself and developed hatred for somebody who took advantage of your mistakes? Esau? We're going to get Esau out of you tonight. You know why? It's 2019. Okay. January's over. Yeah. You've wasted enough months and enough years. It's going to stop. It's going to stop. How's it going to stop? Job, Naomi, and Esau are coming out of you tonight. You're going to stop being hard on yourself. You're going to stop asking God why. And you're going to start saying, I trust you, Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lead. Do not lean to your own understanding. In all thy ways, Acknowledge him and he Fear Allows the devil in trust Allows him 
to bless you. Let's pray. Come on, YouTubers, you pray with me. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these incredible stories of Esau and Job and Naomi. I wasn't criticizing any of them. I was looking at them from the way I look at everything. I've been a counselor for 37 years, so I kind of look at things that way. But some of us tonight, Lord, have Job and Naomi and Esau in our lives. And they are not supposed to be in our lives. Only the Holy Ghost is to be in us. Only the Spirit of the Lord is to be there. Not the root of bitterness of Naomi over her losses. The root of bitterness of Job over his health. The root of bitterness of Esau over his mistakes. And another person who betrayed him and took advantage of his mistakes. There are brothers and sisters. There are children here tonight, Lord, who have these wounds on their soul. And tonight, they are to be healed. They're going to be healed. And I command every root of bitterness in every person. If you don't have one, fantastic. God bless you. Keep going. If you have a root of bitterness, and trust me, it's not because you're a bad person. Roots of bitterness are common in Christianity. If you have one, you are not an isolated incident by far. You are probably involved in the majority of Christians. You can be healed and God wants to heal you of it. God wants to heal you of it. Lord Jesus, any root of bitterness tonight, we lay on the altar at the cross of Calvary. The Bible says the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, is our mercy seat. And we come to the mercy seat. We lay this bitterness for these people that hurt us in the past. We lay them down here at the cross of Calvary. We release Job from our soul. I was sick for a while. I was ill for a while. I developed a root of bitterness. I developed self-pity. I repent of it tonight and I'm going to pray this thing out of me and cast this wickedness out. I'm going to do what Peter told Simon to do. Repent and pray of this wickedness. I'm not going to serve the devil anymore by running me down and being hard on myself. I'm going to repent of it. I'm not going to run myself down anymore. Because you, Father, are not running me down. Thank you for loving me and caring about me. Thank you for these incredible stories in the Bible. That help me see myself as I really am so I can be healed and blessed. I ask you to forgive me right now for every time I ever said, why, God? I'll repent of it right now. Why, God? I'm so sorry I said that. I was wrong. I see it now. I see it. I'm so sorry. Why, why, why? No more whys. From this day forward, I trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Dear God, forgive me. I made mistakes in the past, like Job, and the devil brings them up to me, and he points out my past sin, which in your eyes no longer even exists. And I repent of recreating it and giving it new life. I repent of it right now. My sin is gone. My guilt and shame is gone. And in the name of Jesus, I repent of listening to the devil, the accuser of the brethren, point fingers at me and try to get me to live in self-pity. I repent of it in the name of Jesus Christ. 2019 is my year. This is my year to change. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Come down here. You need to get that root of bitterness out. Yeah? You got a root of bitterness, like many Christians do, and you just come down here. We're going to 
cast this thing out of you tonight Something happened in your past. that was really bad Like a job like Naomi like Esau something bad happened to you something awful happened somebody betrayed you Somebody stabbed you in the back somebody hurt you. Yes. Come on ladies. Come on. Somebody lied to you They stole your money. They hurt your kids. They raped you. They did this. They did that They took advantage of it. something happened and a root of bitterness came down in the soul come down here and just face me now Thank you, Jesus Come on down Ministry team will you come up and help me now you got a root of bitterness in there. You went through a divorce yeah, Remember that one? Yeah, when it's time for divorce everybody grabs for themselves and one of the spouses takes it bad one of the spouses usually gets cheated and that taproot of bitterness from that divorce when they got cheated lasts sometimes a lifetime the devil takes them he takes them over not 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 after tonight not after the night no roots of bitterness when you leave this building tonight no, it's not gonna happen not anymore Not anymore you are going to forgive them and release them Forgiving them is not enough Churches teach false doctrines They tell you just to forgive them. That is not enough. You must release them from your soul a root of bitterness digs into the soul And it keeps the person it owns you. It owns you. Yes. Brother Mike, you talk about it like you're somebody with experience. Thank you. Thank you. That's is correct. Of course, I've made every conceivable screw up you have. Maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but I'm just like you. Yeah, I had roots of bitterness. Uh-huh. Business associates. Uh-huh. Business advisors. Uh-huh. Ex-wives, uh -huh. I've had all that. I understand Yeah, I used to be very hard on myself God gave me grace to repent if he gave it to me he'll give it to you for God is no respect or person Anything I got can be yours and much more And much more Right? I'm a regular person like you. We're all the same. All of us loved by God. All loved equally. But that root of bitterness, Father has warned you. Paul warned you in Hebrews. He said, Beware that a root of bitterness toward your husband, your wife, the guy at work, the government, Trump, Pelosi, all these insane people in Washington. A root of bitterness taps into your soul about these insane people running the country. All these people are demon possessed. You are not to be bitter over their lives. God will handle those people. I got enough on my plate handling myself, if you don't mind. I'm not going to fix Trump and Pelosi. It's not going to happen. I got to focus on me and God's will for my life. How about you? I'm going to close your eyes now. Let's go. Holy Spirit's going to come in here. Just close your eyes now. We'll wait for him to make his move here in just a second. Thank you, Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, you're the one and only. Here's your red carpet here. Every week we roll out the red carpet for the Holy Ghost. Every week. Yes. It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Yes. Isaiah said who has directed the Spirit of the Lord who counsels him whose advice does he seek for all the nations stand before him They are like a drop in the bucket. They're like the dust in the balance All the nations stand before the Spirit of the Lord. They are there is nothing. They are less than nothing Robert, they're like vanity Vanity the Holy Ghost is here He's here that means anything can happen for you Anything can happen to you. Come on, close your eyes and repent of this root of bitterness. Come on, let's let's do it. 
Sweet Jesus, I'm so sorry. I have a root of bitterness tapped into my soul over whoever it was. Husbands, wives, neighbors, employers. Sweet Jesus, myself. I had a root of bitterness over myself. And I'm going to repent of it right now. I'm going to repent of it right now in Jesus' mighty name. God have mercy on my soul. Help me, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, lift this root out of my soul so I can be free. Lift this root out of my soul, dear God. Come on, pray harder. Sweet Jesus, Son of God. Casual prayers don't work when the Holy Ghost is around. He comes to people with desperate hearts, open hearts. Come on now, pray harder. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. My God, have mercy on my soul. I'm so sorry I helped build this Tap root, uh, this tap root in my soul. Come here, sweetheart. Close your eyes, honey. There you go. Open your heart now. Come on, right now. There it is, right there. Big wounds in the soul, right there. Come on now. Just take a big breath and release them. Sweet Jesus, I'm so sorry. Come on now. Just release them now. Come on now. Just release them. All these bad men, all these rotten men that hurt you. All of them just betrayed you. All of them took advantage of you. They took advantage of you. The devil took advantage of you. He sent you bad men. He sent you bad parents. Parents who didn't care. Parents who were unloving. Come on, just repent of that tap root of sin. It's right in there. It's right in there. Come out in Jesus' name. There it is right there. Thank you, Jesus. Come on out. Come on out. Thank you, Jesus. Hold this, honey. Hold that. Come out right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out right now. Anger toward God. Bitterness toward God. I repent of it, Father. I repent of it in Jesus' mighty name. Come on now. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Get out of my head right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come out of there. Come out in the name of the Lord. Come on out. Come out right now. Come on out. Come out. Come out right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. I release my husband from my soul. I let my daughter go. I release my husband from my daughter. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out of me now. And I go. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus, save me. Sweet Jesus, save me. My heart. Heart. Heal my heart, Lord. Too hard on myself. Too hard on others. Help me, Lord Jesus. My husband betrayed me. It started right away. He betrayed me right away. I command my husband and his spirits to come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out of me right now in the name of Jesus. Come on out. Come out. Every transfer of spirit from intercourse. Come out. I want my husband gone. I release him now in Jesus' mighty name. I let him go into the hands of the Lord. I let my husband go. Come out of me right now. Every spirit. Come out of me now. Come out right now. Get out of my body. Come on. Come out right now. Come out of my body right now. Come on now. Come out right now. This life of wickedness when I was young. Come out of me right now. Evil in my youth. Come on out. Right now. Come out right now. Come out there. Come out. Come out now. Get out. In the name of Jesus. Come on out right now. Come on out. Get out of my body right now. 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 Get out of my Angels, come out! Come out! Get out of there! Get out of there! Go! Come on right now! Go! Get out of that body right now! Come out right now! Get out of my head! Come out of my head! Right now! Right now! Come out of me right now! Spirit, come out of there, boy, right now! Come out of there right now! Take a breath and blow like this. Come on now! Spirit, come out of there. Out. Come on. Come on. Keep praying. Don't look at your mouth. Keep praying. Come out. Keep blowing. Spirit, come out of that body right now. Come on out. Come out. Every demon from the mother. 
every demon from the Father. Go now. Go now. Come on out right now. Come out. Get out of my head. Come forward. Come out of my body right now. Come on up. Satan, loose your hold of this boy. Sickness, come out. Insecurity, come out. Low self-esteem, come out. Come on out. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Get out of my body. Come out. Come out. Go. Go now. Come out in Jesus' name. Say that. Tell the devil to come out. There you go. Good. Come out in the name of Jesus. Come out. Get out of my body. Fear. Come out. Fear, come out. Fear, come out in Jesus' mighty name. There you go. Good. Keep going. Good. Come out right now. Say it. Come out right now. Go. 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 Go now. Root of bitterness. Come out. Bitterness from men and my husband. Bitterness. Come out of me right now. Bitterness. Come on out. Hurry up. Bitterness. Bitterness. Come out. God hater. Come out. Bipolar, go. Go in Jesus' mighty name. A taproot of bitterness toward mental illness. Come out now. Come out now. Get out of that head right this second. Come out of there right now. Come on. Say it, honey. Come out right now. Quickly come out. Quickly. Quickly come out. Quickly. Say it. Spirit, I command you to come out of me right now. Spirit, come out of me right now. Say it. Get out right now. Go right now. Come out. Just get mad. There it is. Just get mad. Get mad at the devil. I command this root of bitterness. Come out of me. Come out. Get out of that body. Come out of her. Go in Jesus' name. Come out. 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 Come out of that body right now. Devil, come out of me. Fear. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Tell that demon to come out. Go right now. Come out right now. Come on out. Get out of me. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. You spirit. Witchcraft. Sorcery. Go. Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Sorcery. Go. Go! Get out of that body! Come out! Get out of there! Get out of me! Come on! Fight through it! What's wrong, sweetheart? What's bothering you? Oh, childhood stuff. Um, What's the worst childhood thing? My What'd she do to you? She said a lot of terrible, terrible things to me. She's still alive? What's her name? Trudy. Okay, now what happened was Trudy criticized you and said bad things, and the spirit of rejection got in there. She's hiding in there. Trudy. Trudy's in there. Close your eyes. Take a big breath. Breathe. Trudy, mother, I forgive you. I forgive you. And I now release you from my soul. I don't need a mother anymore. I'm my Heavenly Father. And He would never say bad things about me. Not in a million years. Trudy, spirit of rejection. You ruined your daughter's life. You damaged her forever. When you verbally abused her and you trashed her. And today we're forgiving you. There it is. There it comes. The wound's right there. Come out. Here comes the wound. Trudy, you ruined your daughter for the rest of her life, and our Heavenly Father will restore her tonight. Come out, Trudy. Come out. There it is. Keep coughing. Come on out. There it comes. Here she comes. Keep coughing. Hold that. Keep coughing. Go. Trudy, come out. Trudy, come out. Go. Here she comes. Trudy, come out. Right there. There it goes. Come on out. Get out of my body right now. 
Angels, fake angels, come out. Keep coughing. Come on, Trudy. Come out of there. Come on. Keep going. All of them out. All of it. Every every negative thing she said. Come out. Every critical word she said. Come out. Come out right now. Everything she said. Trudy, come out. Every spirit from Trudy, come out of your gut. Right come out of it. Come out of her guts right now. Come on out. Dad, you're next. Dad, you're next. Come on. Dad, you're next. Let's go. Come on. Dad, you're next. Come on. Come on. Dad, you're next. Dad, you're next. What's wrong with that girl? I know what's wrong with her. Come on. Who's the next one? Trudy and who? Who's the one that hurt you real bad? Who is this? Her and who? You married? Are you married now? Is he here abusing you? He's not a believer. What's his name? Ready? Now take a big breath. All right. Every transfer spirit from Tom hiding in her body that she picked up during intercourse comes out now. Tom, come out of there right now. Here he comes. Here he comes. Tom, come out. Come out. Tom, come out of there. Hurry up. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Come on out. Keep coughing. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Tom, come on. Everything. Tom, come out right now. Fight harder. Come out. Keep coughing. Go. Come on. Everything from Tom has to come out. Come out. Every, every demon from Tom, go. Every doubt and unbelief from Tom, go. Every time you dishonored the Lord, we forgive him. Come out. Come on, Tom. Church problems. Come on out, Tom. Come on out. Get out of there. You keep coughing. Keep coughing. Fight harder. Fight harder. Come out right now. Get out. There it is. Keep coughing. Stop holding back. Come on, sweetheart. Fight harder. Satan, come out of me. Say it. Say it. Devil, come out of me. Come out. Get out of me. There they come. Thank you. Honey, you got the annoying You got the annoying. Let's go. There it comes. Good. Next one. The spirits are coming out right now. You're getting healed. Go. You're getting healed, honey. Come on. Come on now. You're getting healed. Come on. Keep coughing. Fight harder. This is your night. Come on. God hater. Come on, everybody. God hater. God hater. Come out of there. Come out. Come out. Say it. Get out of me. Get out of me, God. There you go. Get out of me, God. 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 Get Satan, come out. Come on. Next one. Let's go. Come on. Come on out. Husband abuse. Come out. Come out. Keep coughing. Come on. Keep coughing. There it comes. Come out, devil. Keep coughing. Fight harder. Come on. Everything from my mother has to come out of my throat. There he is. Stuck right there. There it comes. Come out in Jesus' name. Get out of that body right now. Come out of that body. Hurry up. Come out of that body right now, I said. Get out of her. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Come out of her head. Come out of her neck right now. There he is. Come out of that body right now. Fight harder. Come out. Fight harder. Fight harder. Out. Out, I said. Come on. Root of bitterness. Come out. Bitterness for your wife. Come out. Bitterness for your husband. Come out. Bitterness for life. Come out. Come out. Hurry up. Come on. Come on. Let's fight. Let's go. 
Get out of there. Oh, come out of the back. Come out of the back right now. Come out of there. Get out of the back. Come up quickly. Come up quickly. Come up quickly. Come out. Come out of the boat. Come out of there. Come out. How's your speaking in tongues going? All right, let's go again. Start it up again, ready? Dorabada, repeat after me. Dorabada, kelo masiba, yora bashanda, kelo la moshati, yeko la kura, balo bala. Come on, go. Dear Jesus, I love you. Kora mashanda ravashide. Get out of my body right now. Every ugly man that ever touched me tonight leaves my womb. Leaves my stomach. All the bad men, all the disappointments, all the liars, all the betrayers, all the users, all the users. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. You stinking devil. Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Hurry up. Hurry up. Every, every disappointment, every heartache. Come out. Every betrayer. Everybody betrayed you. Come out. Right now, I said. Come out, Satan. Go, you rotten devil. Get out of that body right now. Say it. Fight harder. Get out of my body right this second. Come out right now. I hate your guts. Fake Jesus. Fake Jesus. Come out. Fake angels. Come out. Fake Jesus. Fake Jesus. Come out. Body, hurry up. Take a big breath. Here he comes. Breathe. Here he comes. Come on out. Come on out. Hold that. Hold this. Hold that. Come on. Take a big breath. Come on, we got all the men here. All of them. Come on. There it is. Let your tears go. Stop holding back. Let your tears go, sweetheart. Let your tears go. Come on. Don't hold back. You're supposed to be healed tonight, honey. Sweetheart, this is your night. Tonight's your night. The Holy Ghost is here. Anything can happen. Come on. Get rid of these ugly men. Out of your womb, out of your groin, out of your vagina, out of your. Come on, out of your stomach. There it is. Just keep breathing. Come on out. Come on. Come on out. I told you to get out of my body right now. I'm in it. Come out of there. Fake Jesus. Fake angels. I command every demonic angel. Come out. Every fake Jesus. Come out. Every prophetic demon. Fire tunnels. Prayer tunnels. I bind your power. Come out. Fire tunnels. Come out. Two grandmas and witches. Witches? Yeah, two grandmas. Maria and Rubikas. What they did to her? Huh? What they did to her? Uh, I think English. A little bit less? Just a little bit. Uh, and her husband was an evangelist, supposedly. Married for 20 years. When he left, he left a satanic patient in the garage. What was his name? Uh, Michael. 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 Okay, ready. Michael's in there. We gotta get Michael out. Tell her. Michael has to come out. And Michael's demons. Okay. In Jesus' mighty name. I saw a picture. I ministered to, to her. Her granddaughter. Look, after Michael drew these satanic pictures on, on, on the garage, she woke up and she's got all over the place. Look at her. Yeah, that's her granddaughter. Yeah. Is that a witchcraft case? Witchcraft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, take a big breath. Right. Get away from there. Get away from her. Over here, sweetheart. Get away from her. Add a girl. Add a girl. Take a big breath and blow. Big breath and blow. Now oh, come on, big breath and blow. Come on. Come on. We renounce that curse. We renounce the power of witchcraft. We command it to come out of my body, and my stomach, my joints, my head. Come on. You witch. Come out of there, you warlock. Come out right now. 
Come out, you warlock. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus Christ. Blow. Come out. Animax toxic. Anima spine. Anima spine. Go. Get out of that body right now. I want all the guys gone tonight. Not one left. Out of there. Everybody that used you. Users. They used you for sex. We're going to forgive all of them and cast all of them out. Go. Come on, everybody. There they come. Come on. Right now. Come on. Come on, ladies. Transfer spirits during intercourse. You had sex and a spirit transferred into your body from some unclean man. Come on. Come out right now. Come on out. And every one of them men have got to come out. If you sleep with a guy that has demons, you got it. You just, you just picked up demons. Come on out. Self hatred, hard on myself, guilt and shame. No more. Not 2019. No more. No more. Come out. Come on out. Grief and sorrow, disappointment. Our command is food demon to come out. Using food as a comfort instead of the Holy Ghost. Out. Come out of me right now. There he is. Come on out. Come out of her. Come out. There he comes. Come on out. Food demon. Food spirit. Come on. Come on there. Using food as a comfort. I bind your power. The Holy Ghost is your comforter, not food. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Food demon. Come out, buddy. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Food demons. They try to give you high blood pressure, diabetes. Food spirits try to kill you. They kill you slowly. They kill you slowly. Cast them out right now. Spirit of food, I bind your power. Gluttony and lust. Come on out. You get out of my body right this second, you foul spirit. I command you. I take total authority over you, witch. Come out, you witch. Out in Jesus' holy name. Adultery and fornication. Oral sex. Come out of my mouth. Oral sex. Come out of there. Come out right now. Every incident of oral sex, I command you to come out of my mouth right now. Jesus' holy name. Fornication. Go. Oh. Out. Come out of that body right now. Come out. Spirit, I hate you. Come out of me. Spirit, I hate you. Come out of me. Satan, I hate you. Come out. There he comes. Here he comes. Glory to God. Come out. Come out. Come out. Hold that. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Out. Come out right now. Every spirit of boredom. Every spirit of boredom. Come out of there. Come on out. Come on. Food. Diabetes. High blood pressure. You get on that body quick. Come out right now. Quicker. Come out quicker. Come out right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get out. You don't handle the devil lightly. You take command over the devil. You don't sit there and do nothing. What's wrong with you? What are you, nuts? Have you lost your spiritual mind? If you sit there and do nothing, you know what you're going to get? Nothing. Come on. Get your husband out of there. Get that curse broke off you. Get that fake autism out of there. Autism. That's a lie. You liar. Autism's a lie. Autism's a lie. It's the devil doing it. Get out of there. Satan. YouTubers, put your hand on your body right where you are. Wherever your pain is, put your hand on your body there. Put your hand on your body. You command that spirit of pain to come out. Come out. Command that spirit of pain. Come out. Come on. Jesus said to the man in Mark chapter 1, you foul spirit, I charge you. Come out. Jesus said, I charge you. Come out. You can't pray and get a demon out. Praying don't work. 
You pray before you get the demon out. Praying ain't gonna work. Jesus prayed before he cast the demons out. Come on, fight! Don't sit there and do nothing like a coward. Come on, ladies. I know you feel you're embarrassed. It's embarrassing. You no, know, it's not embarrassing. It takes courage to get the devil out. Courage. You gotta fight back with courage. Anybody can sit like a coward and do nothing. You gotta fight Satan. He's fighting you. You gotta hate the devil. He hates you. Hate him back. Come on. Clean out your temple like Jesus did. He took him a cat of nine tails. He walked into the temple. How dare you turn my father's house into a house of merchandise? How dare you fill my father's house with a bunch of crap from China? I command you out of my father's house. Out in Jesus' mighty name. Come on now. Use your authority. Fight back quickly. Quickly fight back. Quickly fight back. Quickly do it. You got brain demons. You got mind control spirits. They're in your head. They're in your head, Jack. Fight back quickly. Put your hands on your head, YouTubers. You got brain demons. You were married for 30 years. Your mind is half gone. The other part of your mind was gone and you didn't even know it. You got brain demons, dude. They get in your head. They take over your mind. Come on. Put your hands on your head. They show my hands on the sick and they shall recover. You put your hands on your head. Don't you see it? Don't you get it? The spirits are in your brain. They're in your head. They're in your head. Put your hands on your head. In Jesus' holy name, I'll repent of this root of bitterness for my wife, for my husband, for my son-in-law, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my daughter-in-law. They stabbed me right in the back. They stabbed me right in the back. They lied to me. They abused me. They used me. Tonight, this tap root that went into my soul. I command Job to come out of me. I command Esau, come out. I command Naomi, come out of me. Clinical depression, come out. Depression, come out. Come out now. Self-hatred, cursing myself. Joe, come out of me. Come out of me right now. In Jesus' mighty name, come out. Self cursing. Out. I want you out of my body, you rotten spirit. At any cost. At any cost, come out. At any cost, come out. Any cost. No matter what it takes, I want them out right now. I'm going to use my God-given authority. Behold, I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing. Nothing shall hurt you. Come on, step out in faith. You will not be hurt. You will not be hurt. Whatever you bind on this earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on this earth is loosed in heaven. I bind these spirits in my body and my brain and I loose my body from the claws of the devil. I loose my body from the claws of my husband and my wife, the chronic disappointment of my rotten, stinking marriage. I repent of all the negative things I've said about him or her. I repent of all the bitterness, the root of bitterness that spewed out of my filthy mouth. I repent of it right now. Blasphemy, Spirit. You are bound in Jesus' name. Come out. Spirit of unbelief and doubt, come out now. Unbelief and doubt, come out now. Get out of there. I said come out right now. Come out. I command every food demon in my body telling me to eat for comfort. Eat and get fat. Eat and get diabetes. Eat 
Eat and get peripheral neuropathy. Eat and get irritable bowel syndrome. Eat and get colitis. I bind that spirit in my body right now. You filthy devil, come out! Come out of there! Come out! Come out faster! Come on, sweetie. You got a great anointing. Take over. Come on, honey. You got a nice anointing. Use it. That girl. That girl. Come on now. Come on, Jesus. Come out of here right now. Get out of my husband. Oh, get out of my husband. Come out of my husband. Come out of my husband. Get out of him. Come out of him. Come out of him. Come out of him. Get out of my husband. Come out of him. Come out of him. Come out of him right now, I said. Spirit, I curse you. I fail. Come out of my husband. Get out of him. Come out of him. Insanity. Come out of him. Derangement. Come out of him. Instability. Instability. Come out. Get out of my husband. Come out of him. Get out of my husband. Come out. Oh, in Jesus' holy name. Come out now. Hurry up. Get out. Go in the name of the Lord. Let the man of God go. Hurry up. Hurry up right now. Get this man of God. Get out. Get out. Run safer. Run safer. Come out of me. All of them. All the misery, all the sadness. Come out. All of it. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I curse you. Come out of there. Hurry up. Hurry up. You get out of that body right now. You get out of that body right now. Oh, I tell you that's a fake disease. Fake angels. Fake Jesuses. All of the insanity. Come out. Get out of there. Go in the name of the Lord. Come on. This is a route. Come out of there. You can't even come out of that body right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of there. Religious demons. Come out. Church demons. Religious demons. Church demons. All religious demons. Church demons. Come out. Demons from being laid on hands. Come out right now. Fire tunnel. Fire tunnel demons. Out. Clear tunnel demons. Come out! Hurry up! In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, get out of there! In the name of Two years of it. Come out! All of them! Now, yeah, about All of them today. Yeah. All of them. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Anxiety, fear of the future. Come out. Thus saith the Lord. Come out. Get out of there. There he goes. There he goes. Glory to God. Come on. Come on. Um, she went and got a relationship with a guy, and she decided to stop saying Lucky, and she got a firm list. But Lucky, she renounced, she renounced all the prayer, but now we're just... You gotta get Lucky out of here. Okay. Lucky is the opposite of what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Alright, Father God. Forgive me for having anything to do with Lucky. I should have never even shake shake his hand. But the devil drew me in. And then Lucky transferred spirits into my body. Lucky transferred in. Now I'm unlucky. And I forgive him. And I want all of Lucky's demons out of my body right now. There you go. Take a big breath. Whoa. Come on, come on, Lucky. Come out of there. Lucky, you pervert. Come out. Oral sex with Lucky. Oral. Come out. Right now. Come out of there. Lucky, come out. Adultery. Come out. Adultery. Lucky. Adultery with Lucky. Come out. Come out of me. Evil. Come out. 
Evil, come out. Evil, come out. Dreams and visions, go. Dreams and visions, come on there right now. No more dreams and visions. Come out, you rotten devil. Leave me, I never come back. Leave me, and never come out, a girl. Thank you, Jesus. Come out, Satan. Three years of agony tonight comes out. All three years. Come out. Come out right now. All the misery, all the disappointments. Go. Come out there right now. Every spirit for my husband. Every one of them. I want all of them out tonight. I'm not dying of high blood pressure and diabetes. Come out, my buddy. Come out right now, Satan. Lose your hope. Come out, Satan. Betrayal. Go. Failure. Go. Come out right now. Heartache and disappointment. Go. There you go. Keep yawning. Come out. Come on now. Keep yawning. Keep going. Get out of that body. Insanity. Insanity. There it comes. Keep coughing. Come on. Keep, co keep going. Harder. Come on. Add a girl. Keep going. Keep going. Come on. Keep coughing. Add a girl. Keep coughing. Lucky, come out. Lucky, come out. Come out of the spine. Lucky, come out. Lucky, come out of the spine. Go. Go. YouTubers, you got to put your hand on your body and take command. Schizophrenia, bipolar, borderline personality disorder, autism, the whole spectrum. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Out of my head. Right now. Every thought of lust, every thought of revenge, every thought of anger, I renounce it. Every ounce of self pity, every second of self pity, I command it to go. I said go. Self pity, feeling sorry for myself, feeling sorry. Come on, self pity, come out of there right now. Come out, regrets, regrets, come out. Oh, regrets. All of them. All the regrets. All the regrets. All the failures. All the failures. All the failures. Fight harder. Come on, sweetie. Come on, every demon from Lucky. Keep coughing. Add a girl. Keep coughing. Fight harder. Come on out. YouTubers, you got to go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. You got to go to the website and go to the teaching page. Click. Go down and read the article, Satan's Counterattack. You will be hit. Within 48 hours of this service, you will be hit. The devil is going to try and steal what you got tonight. Within 48 hours. Satan's counterattack. Read that on the website. On the website, under the teaching button. Read the article, How Satan Controls the Mind. How Satan Controls the Mind. Okay, that, that little article will save your life. It will save your life. How Satan controls the mind. Next Friday night will be another night like this. A rout. The devil gets routed every Friday night. Thursday is the healing rooms. Another night of routing. The devil getting routed again. You know what a rout is? It's a blowout. You want a blowout? It's a butt kicking of staggering proportions. The Holy Ghost is the only person, the only person the demons truly fear. He's the only person they fear. They do not fear human beings. They don't fear religious people. They don't fear men and women of God. The Holy Ghost is the only person they truly fear. When he shows up, anything can happen. Anything can happen. The Bible says, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. You have to go first. You can't get anything from God until you go first. Draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. 
Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Double-minded Christians are all over the place. It's the Greek word dipsicus. It's somebody with two souls. Somebody that has two souls. One minute you're talking to the real person and the real soul. The next minute you're talking to a fake soul and another person pops up. Your husband doesn't sound like your husband anymore. Your wife becomes a different person. There are dipsicus. Cleanse your hands, your sinners. Purify your hearts. You dipsicus, you double-minded. You person with two souls. Repent, says the Lord. So the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. You got to repent. You got to make the first step. You can't just sit there and get delivered. You got to take a step of faith and make a move. In the rap world, it's called bust a move. But we're not in a bar where you bust a move. You bust a move here. You make a move toward, toward the Son of God. Take a step toward Him, then He takes a step toward you. Draw nigh to God. He will then draw nigh to you. But you got to go first. These people down here tonight, the demons have been flying out of them. Why? They went first. They drew nigh to God. And then He drew nigh to them. Some people sit and do nothing when they come to these services. They just sit in the back and do nothing. They sit in the front and do nothing. If you do nothing, you get nothing. But why? The law of sowing and reaping. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. If you sow zilch, you know what you reap? You reap zilch. If you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption. Your life has been corrupted long enough. Now, 2019, now is your year to turn this thing around. Come on, YouTubers, this is your moment. Thus saith the Lord, if my people, said the Lord, if my people, which are called by my name, shall do what? Humble themselves. Shall do what? Pray. Shall do what? Seek my face. you got to make the first move. What? And do what? Turn from their wicked ways. Then, says the Lord, then, God says, I will hear you from heaven. Then, then, I will hear you from heaven. Then, I will forgive you of your sins. Then I will heal your land. Get that root of bitterness out of your soul. That thing's got to go. You don't understand. You can't survive with that thing in there. It will get you sooner or later. Sooner or later, a root of bitterness will finish your life. Sooner or later, you'll go back to porn. Sooner or later, you'll go back to adultery. Sooner or later, you'll go back to lying. Sooner or later, the anxiety disorder will come back. The fear will come back. That root of bitterness toward yourself, toward God, toward somebody else, toward whatever, has got to come out. And 2019, it is going to come out. You have spent your last year a spiritual failure. It's not going to happen anymore. It's not going to happen anymore. You are going to stop this thing. You're going to stop this thing. Whatsoever will say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. That verse does not work if you have doubt or you have unbelief. That verse does not work. You can say stuff till the cows come completely home. You'll get nothing from God. You can say stuff till morning to night. And that verse will not work. Okay? When you say it, you have to believe it. You cannot have doubt. If you have doubt, it cancels out your prayers. How'd you, how'd you do tonight? How'd you do tonight? Good. You're going to be fighting from now on? You're going to keep touching me? You're going to keep touching me? I love you. Love you, Mom. Okay, see you next time. When you speak something out, when you speak to that mountain, that mountain it will not move. If you have doubt, if you have unbelief, 
When you stand praying, Jesus said, Believe. When you stand praying, Jesus said, Forgive. If you have aught against any, then your Heavenly Father will forgive you of your trespasses. When you stand praying, Jesus said, and I quote, and I quote, forgive if you have aught against any. If you have aught against somebody, you're in deep trouble. We cannot have aught. We must follow God's pattern. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And tonight I will forgive my insane husband. I will forgive my crazy wife. I will forgive my children who betrayed me. I will forgive the doctor that screwed up my surgery and gave me the wrong medications. I will forgive tonight so I can be healed. Forgiveness is the most selfish thing a human being can do. Go ahead and be selfish tonight. Be selfish. Just forgive them. So you can be healed. You can be healed. For if you do not forgive, your Heavenly Father will not forgive your trespasses. What are trespasses? Paraptima is the Greek word. It means failures. Mistakes, screw ups, failures, mistakes, screw ups. Your Father in heaven will not release you of your screw ups if you don't release them of their screw ups. You move first, God moves second. You step out first, then Father steps out second. That's how the system of faith works. The Greek word is pistis. You step out on your faith, believing first. Then the Holy Ghost makes his incredible move. The Holy Ghost is the only person the demons truly fear. They do not fear anything or anyone else. When he's around, when he's around, anything can happen. Anything is possible if you only believe. Anything is possible if you will only believe. Come on, just do it. Let's get him out of there. All of it. All three miserable years. Come on. Come on. All the disappointments and all the sadness. Uh, there it goes. Come on. Come out of her. Satan, loose this beautiful woman right now. Loose her. <laughs> Satan, loose the woman of God. Loose her. Loose her destiny. Loose her. Regrets. All the regrets. Out. All the regrets. All the misery. All the confusion. All the disappointments. <laughs> Come on. Come on. YouTubers, you're, are you married? If you are, hey, you divorced? If you are, hey, are you getting married? If you are, hey, you better be careful. You better be careful. You do not get married because you love someone. If you love that person, that is not grounds to get married. You are a born-again Christian. You are a child. You are a man of God. You are a woman of God. You do not get married just because you love someone. Love is no reason to get married. God's permission is the only reason to get married. If you love the person, that is not enough to marry him. Thus saith the Lord, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, all thy strength. Then you love your neighbor as yourself. Then you love someone else and you fall in love and get married. First, you love the Lord your God. Then, you love somebody else. Love is no reason to marry somebody. Do not do that. If you do, hell will come to breakfast in your house. 
And do not marry somebody just because you love them. Can you tell us you your don't want hell to you tonight? To come to breakfast at your house. The Lord bless me tonight because on, my sister was praying Listen for me, me and he Listen said that there is an spirit of octopus, octopus and I put that like in my forehead. Something is the only heart place you get it. God said, the only place you get it. Okay. Okay. Me. Get an Thank you, she said. Oh, Sarah Messiah. Lord, Lord. straight, straight. Yeah. You preach as hard, you preach as straight. You know why? Because you owe nobody nothing. You are beholding to nobody. You do what's right and you let the chips fall where they may. Do what's right. Do what's right and let the chips fall where they may. Come on, YouTubers. Listen to me. Just do what's right. Do what's right. If it's hard on you, go ahead and take it. If it's hard on you, go ahead and take it. If it's easy on you, go ahead and take it. Just do what's right and let the chips fall where they may. Next Friday at 7 o'clock, we've scheduled another route of the devil here at the Arizona Deliverance Center, 7 p.m. Mountain Time, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Next Thursday night, if you are mentally ill, come to the Mental Illness Healing Class, 7 o'clock in this sanctuary where I'm standing right now. Come right here at 7 o'clock. You got schizophrenia, you got bipolar, whatever you got, come here. Thursday night at 7 o'clock. Our healing room is open in the small sanctuary, 7 p.m. next Thursday. You know what happens over there? Another route. See you next time.